Conquer Athlete Community, what's up? We're back here on the Conquer Coaches Chat. Tommy Palms and myself. And today we are doing a quick 15-minute talk addressing what the road to the Opens should look like from now until the Opens start. So we have five weeks time until the Opens start, which is going to be the week of February 29th, I believe. I didn't get that wrong, did I? Do you know offhand? No, um, <laughs> I do not. Let me check yeah, really fast. I, cool, I got cool, it right cool. here. February 29th to March 18th, the 2024 yeah. crossover. Okay, so I was right. Be beautiful. So we're not breaking down everything. We're just saying from this point forward, you guys have five weeks until the start of the Open. What should you be doing inside these five weeks? And we're going to address it for two athletes. We're not going to address it for someone that just wants to do better in the Open. We're going to address it for somebody that is going to get to semifinals and they want to do well there. And then we're going to address it for someone that wants to do better in the quarterfinals, may not make the semifinals. So we're going to look at these two athletes for today's talk, okay? And what I'm the first to do, I'm going to piggyback it over to Tommy. Tommy, you're working with an athlete, and the objective for this male or female is they want, they're going to get to the semifinals. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have a history of getting there, their levels – their skills and capacity is super high. There's like a 99% chance they're going to be at semifinals and they want to do really well there. They want to finish in, let's call it like the top 15. Okay. They're not just going there just to be there on the floor. What do these five weeks look like for you going into day one of the open? Um. Okay. Yeah. So the, the lead up to the open, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> for these athletes that are semifinals, like, uh, I would just consider this the beginning of the season for them post Waterpalooza. So this is the start of like, um, not a, a competition phase just yet. Um, but we're, we're really getting into the nitty gritty of programming intensity starting to really ramp up. Um, you know, so for them, we're not really like trying to prep for the open. I'm not doing anything where it's like, um, you know, we're doing like simulation weekends or anything of that nature. Like um, as we lead up for the open, it's pretty straightforward programming based upon what they need to get better at. And then when the open even does approach, you know, that's just another workout. Um, they're just going to be thrown in there on Fridays whenever they have to do it for some of these athletes. Um, I don't even want them to be concerned with it. So I'm thinking of sabotaging them to a certain degree. Um, and what I mean by that is like making them do it like right after a workout so that it, they can't even like be upset with if they did bad or well, it's just like, this is how I did because I don't want them to have a negative mindset around one workout. Um, that really means nothing, especially when we're not even trying to peak for it. For sure. So you talked about intensity. How much intensity are your athletes doing now for this person? That, mm. was a weird, that was a weird sentence. How much intensity is this person doing? Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is kind of the start of things uh, for like a semifinalist that's peaking there, right? Because we have, right now we have 11 weeks until quarterfinals uh, or 12 and then we have a few more weeks after that until semifinals. So I'm still months out from where I need to be peaked. Mm -hmm. But even for a semifinal athlete these days, like you, unless you're a surefire thing going to games, I think you have to be somewhat peaked for quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. So intensity does have to ramp up a little bit more. And as I get closer to quarterfinals, um, you know, there'll be like three good solid days of intensity and potentially even doing like a simulation weekend, like two weeks out before quarterfinals, just to get build some awareness around that and practice of competing and having to do multiple hard workouts in a row. Um, and just like practice competition style settings that you like, you know, setting floors up and uh, videoing and, and things of that nature. Yeah. So time, let me ask some, how do you, how do you define intensity at this point? And what I mean by that question is, for this athlete of the next five weeks, are you talking about like max effort work? Are you talking about like high intensity work? Is there anything kind of like, or a mixture of it all just for, you know, coaches listening, if they have athletes like this, how would you put the intensity in quote unquote, the box mm. in these five weeks? Yes. So I guess what more so it kind of starts to look like, 
for most athletes, like the intensity, yeah, the intensity is like high up there. There might be some things like done at a hundred percent effort, like even like some like lactate work, like really, really, really aggressive intensity with really large periods of rest. Like that definitely starts to come in and be a factor, like two minutes on 10 minutes off for multiple sets. Like you could start to do some really gnarly things like that to build resiliency around it, but also just like both physically and mental resiliency around it. And then just getting the body prepared for it. Um, so some things like that will come into play as well, where like, you know, intensity is always kind of happening throughout the season. Uh, I just think now it's like, you're really ramping up. Right now with these five weeks, are you changing anything from, barbell work what does your barbell work look like for these athletes so if i was prepping them for the open it would i would definitely be looking more like light barbell cycling you know we always eh, i mean people now say that that's what the open is right like i wouldn't say that six years ago like you had to be prepared for any kind of barbell we've seen snatch ladders go up to like 265 in the open with mm -hmm. chest to bar pull-ups we've seen cleans go up to 315 and the ladder as well we haven't been seeing that as much as recent In the past couple of years. We've been seeing, you know, like 10 rounders of like 10 snatches at 115 or mm -hmm. thrusters at 95, right? Those typical lightweights. Um, and then what we see in quarterfinals is more that moderate to moderate heavy barbell, potentially a pretty heavy barbell. Uh, last year, we saw some cleaning jerks at 275 and you had to be moving it fast. So it depends also what my athlete is good at. I have some athletes who can move a heavy barbell, like it's no one's business, but then struggle with a light barbell. So even though, you know, the competition tends to be something I'm not necessarily just doing that because that's what competition has been in the past. What's cool about this sport is that just because the test looked like that last year, doesn't mean it's going to look like that this year. And so whatever my athlete needs the most resiliency built around is what I'm going to be, you know, prepping them for. Mm. I like that. Yeah, that's something with this sport that is so exciting, intriguing, but also um, stressful too, right? Where we just have no idea what the tests are, right? So yeah. it's like... Last year was a big curveball because there was a lot of um, bottlenecks, as you would call it, meaning like one movement is really just... You can't game plan the workout to weakness and strategies you can't be like oh, i'll break this up more so i could do better here it was like this entire workout is about how well you can do a, a seated legless rope climb for example like mm -hmm. none of no no other aspects of the workout mattered hope i mean i'm hoping it doesn't look like this that this year um but even with it being that last year it's not like that's the only thing you can prepare for right like we've have so much data around what the sport tends to look like and so this, like we always speak about, you know, if your principles are in line, um, then you should be able to perform well, regardless of the test. Yeah. Like I've heard a lot of people talking about, you got to prep for bottlenecks because that's what it's going to be. Cause that's what Boz likes. And it's like, well, what if he doesn't like it anymore? Then you're fucked. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's very intriguing. Okay. So your athletes going to the semifinals, this is the time in these five weeks where they're just starting to kind of get into that ramp up phase. Correct. As you mm -hmm. know, you're putting in some intensity with the person. Um, you're looking more so as 11 to 12 weeks out from the quarterfinals. The barbell work for this person is really going to be dependent upon who they are. So if that's someone that's more strength-based, they might focus on more cycling. If it's someone that's more endurance, not as strong, they're going to hit up more strength work. Is that correct? Yeah, and if I was to, just for the listeners, if I was to generalize it, um, and we're going to, let's just say, quarterfinals i do think even a surefire semifinal athlete still has to be peaked like i am relatively concerned right now with having to move a moderately heavy barbell pretty fast and i would say moderately heavy is like let's just say 315 clean is considered heavy i'm worried about 275 for a guy let's just say that a 225 snatch is heavy i'm worried about that 185 205 bar maybe even touches at 225 these days because like now all of a sudden everyone clean, uh, snatches 300 pounds. So that's, if I was going to generalize it, that's what I'm concerned with at the moment. Mm. Love it. Love it. Okay. Anything else that you want to talk, leave the listers with for this athlete? 
Um, yeah, I think the uh, the quarterfinals is a really good idea. If you even if you have a surefire semifinalist, like the quarterfinals is still a great time to practice competition. And I do think that you should practice competition prior to the quarterfinals. So having a little simulation week in the weekend in there, I think like two week at two weeks out is a, a good idea, regardless of who they are. Um, unless they're games athletes, maybe they don't need to do that, but that would be something I would consider as well. Awesome. Beautiful. All right. So the next athlete we're going to talk about is the athlete that, that's going to get through the open and they want to do better in the quarterfinals. So this is an athlete that, you know, if something goes extremely fucking well and amazing, they might sneak into the semifinals, but it's someone that doesn't have their eyes set on the semifinals. It's someone that says, Hey, last year I finished X spot this year. I want to finish this spot higher. Right? So for me, I'm going to be looking at this athlete in, in two facets and Tommy alluded to it as well. The semifinalists I'm looking at this athlete, if they're endurance based or if they're more of a power strength based athlete. Now, if this athlete is more of a power strength based athlete, then the fact that they're not doing too well in the quarterfinals is going to lead me to believe that we have to build more time in their capacity. They need more focus and work there. So inside these five weeks, they're going to be set more on what's called like that I like to call sequential programming, which means with inside this with five weeks, we're going to be hitting up really high intense work one day a week, uh, max effort style work from two to three, possibly four minutes in range. And we're going to be hitting up threshold work one, maybe two days a week with enough rest time in between. The threshold work that I'm going to be doing for these people is going to be anywhere from six to 15 minutes. I may be doing sets. I may not. But let's just call it a total work time, Tommy, of like 20 to 25 minutes, whether it's sets. Um, if it's one time straight through, probably like 15 to 20 minutes. So if I were to kind of keep things blueprint focused for this talk, think one day of each. One day max intensity, one day threshold work. And the other day is going to be more capacity work at lower intensity for this athlete. For this athlete, the pro the barbell work is going to be more sort of like a from a cycling standpoint, um, moderate loads heavy loads, light loads, just to get them familiar with building that endurance and capacity around moving a barbell, whether it's for task or time uh, demands as put on by the programming for CrossFit. If it's more of an endurance-based athlete, this is going to shift around just a little bit for me for this person. So for me, I like, all right, over these next five weeks, this is an endurance-based athlete. They're probably not that strong if they're not really getting through quarterfinals and probably not that skilled from a gymnastic standpoint. So how am I going to get them ready in these five weeks to, as the start of the Open starts up? And so right now, I'm probably going to be running more heavier barbell work for this person, depending upon their strength protocols and where they are. And with inside this week, we're going to be focusing on more higher intensity work, more threshold style work. Um, and the barbell work and skill work, depending on how the person is, I'm assuming they're not that skilled, and not that strong, is going to be a little bit more focused for them with inside these threshold style workouts. From there, as we get closer to about one and a half, two weeks out, I'm probably going to tackle some max effort work in there just to kind of prep them. And then as they segue into the open, that stuff's all going to disappear between the threshold and the max effort work. The midweek stuff will be more kind of like endurance base. And then as we segue into the quarterfinals, that's going to look a little bit different as we ramp them up for the quarterfinals. But I had to stop myself, Tommy, because I was about to start diving into the weeks between the open and the quarterfinals. But for the sake of this talk, like if we keep it just to these five weeks, that's what I'm looking at to do for this person that's going into the quarterfinals, depending on the type of athlete that they are and what these five weeks is going to look like. So, just to backtrack, endurance-based athlete, we're going to be sitting around higher threshold work for them. Uh, when I say higher threshold, I'm talking about 85 90% efforts from a mixed modal standpoint. We're going to be working on skills with inside this where they're going to be manageable and successful to complete. The barbell work for this athlete is still going to have touches on pure absolute strength, but we're going to be shifting that more towards strength, power, endurance over the next five weeks. And as we segue out to one and a half, two weeks, we're probably going to touch on some max effort work, 95, 98, 100% max effort work for them, just to get a few feels of that for the body and the system leading into the open. And a, pow a power strength-based athlete, this person will be running more sequential for the straight five weeks, meaning there's not going to be a shift from like threshold to high intensity work. I'm just going to be giving them touches throughout the week, building up into it. And why am I doing that? 
because they're going to need power strength based athlete athletes have a harder time with inside block systems because their ability to recover from the the cost the the sequential demand of a system is harder for them right so i want to give them kind of like less touches but more frequent touches with inside this work the barbell work will be more around like cycling components for them um not so much focused on on heavy absolute work you know what i'm saying oh yeah baby <laughs> any questions for me on that tommy or you think the list um, has questions on i know you don't have questions on it but i'm saying like any questions yeah. you might have? Um, I would maybe touch more on why um these these more powerful athletes can't do that uh block periodization as well. I know you said why, but like maybe like just giving them more of an insight on like what why that is and like maybe where they would have trouble recovering and why it wouldn't work as well. Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. So. For the most part, power strength-based athletes, right? They're more power dominant, more strength dominant. So these athletes are going to fire more motor units, more motor neurons a lot faster and a lot more aggressively to do a movement. So what does that mean? Well, think about someone that like when they lift or they do a movement, it's very explosive, very aggressive. You're like, boom, it's like a cannon being shot, right? These are these types of athletes. These athletes need more recovery or else too much work, too much high intense work, too much volume is going to really wear and tear on their body. So essentially these athletes, they need a lot of time and focus building that basement to be able to sustain more intensity, more threshold style work. When you put them inside of a block system where you're getting more touches of, let's say, two to three days a week of threshold work or two, three days a week of max effort VO2 max work, that's just going to be too much on the system to handle from a recovery standpoint. So they're not able to fully recover from those systems as you're sequentially hitting those throughout the week, which this leads them too much fatigue. So for these athletes, think about it too, it's very similar to their ability from a strength training perspective, right? So these athletes, when you're putting them with inside strength training blocks, they can do really well with higher intense work but need less volume they can't handle as much work as much touches under the barbell uh because they need longer time to recover because just how much units how much motor neurons they fire when they do lift whereas endurance based athletes they're not going to be as strong explosive or powerful but they can handle more volume more workload so that's pretty much where i was going with that it's more from a fatigue management standpoint so that they can progress over these five weeks without going into the open feeling already exhausted and depleted, not being able to recover and perform well when they need to perform well. Love it. Um, now for these athletes that are quarterfinal based, right? That's all they're, you know, they're really peaking for that. You know, what is the lead up uh, to quarterfinals during the open look like for them? So that's a great question. So during the open for these athletes, we're put, obviously it's so many people, the, the name of the game has really changed, right, Tommy, especially this year, because such a high percentage of people are going through, right? So we want them to do well in the open, but it's not life or death because we're assuming with this style of person that they're going to get through the open. They won't have a problem with that. So they're going to hit the workout. Um, I'm going to have them hit the workout first. And, and fresh. I want them to do well. I want to learn from it. I want them to progress with it. And then from there, we're going to hit up some other training along the way. During the week, during the week throughout the open, their training is going to be mostly like endurance based, uh, sustainability work from a mixed mode standpoint, trying to not overload their joints as they go into the open. Now, once the open ends, there will be some sort of slight back off from intensity for these athletes for about a week, but we're still going to be getting work and touches in. And then it's going to be a ramp, a ramp up back in through it. And for me, honestly, man, for these two style of athletes, the way I, I, I progress them into the open isn't going to change that much as I progress them into the quarterfinals. What's really going to change is the, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, man? It, the demand of the task that they have to complete. I think that's just a fancy way of me saying the type of workouts that they do, right? Mm. That's kind of where the shift. So the training, the workouts, the stuff built around intensity and threshold and max effort work, that's going to shift around more of the demand of what the quarterfinals have been collectively over the years with 
during the week an emphasis around improving their main fatigue limiters and skill sets that need to come up to have them do better throughout the quarterfinals. So that's how I'm looking to progress them through it. So that's a great answer. Thanks, man. Of course. <laughs> so guys, that's what we got for you guys. Two athletes, one leading into the semifinals, one leading into the quarterfinals. Tommy Palms broke down the higher level athlete. I broke down the, the athlete that's, dare I say, without hurting feelings, not as good as the other athlete. <sighs> you can say that, right? They're just not as good. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty black and white. It is what it is, right? So if you guys have any questions, let us know. Uh, as always, check out our YouTube channel where this is posted for all the videos that we have done. We'll be putting out videos like this weekly to give you guys more information and insight in the training, coaching, and everything that we do. So we hope you guys enjoy this quick little YouTube video. If you guys have anything specific that you want us to talk on, please leave a comment, send an email to help conquerathlete.com. Share this, like it, do all the cool things, and give us more followers. Yeah, Bye, guys. <laughs> Later.